series that we started last week, Pastor Mark picked it up this morning, talking about being blessed. We're talking about being blessed. We looked at the prayer of Jabez, and we looked this morning at Psalm 23. We're going to look tonight at the passage in the Bible in Genesis chapter 12. If you've got your Bible and you want to turn to Genesis 12, put your finger in it or something, or just leave it open on your knee or on your iPad, or find it in your phone, open it and put it back in your pocket, whatever it is that you want to do. We're talking about blessed. Blessed, I think, is one of the most badly understood words that kicks around nowadays. We use it in all sorts of strange contexts. Um, I was, I grew up, uh, I grew up in Bolton, not far from here, uh, and went to a school called Cannon Slade School. Anybody else go to Cannon Slade School? Anybody else? Just put your hand up nice and high. Yeah, that's great. Joel Moffat started it just last week. Well done, Joel. Following in incredible people's footsteps. Awesome. And uh, it's, a, it's a Church of England a secondary school. And um, I didn't grow up in the Church of England. And so I'd never been through the process of uh, communion in the Church of England. But once a term, we'd have a communion service in the school. For me, it was just like, yeah. It's like half a day off lessons. What a great reason. And you'd have to go in and, um, and you'd kind of sit in an assembly and someone would speak for a little while and you'd sing songs that, that no one sang anymore. And then you'd have to file down to the front and round the front of the platform were these cushions to kneel on. And then at about throat height, if you were a year seven, there was this little wooden ledge. And the idea was that if you were taking communion and you'd been through the process in the Anglican church, you'd been able to take communion, you put your hands together like this and you received communion from one of your teachers. Slightly odd, I grant you. But if you've not been through communion, been through communion in the Anglican church, you weren't allowed to have it. Which I was like a little bit indignant about. And, and, and you know, I'm a fairly mild-mannered, quietly spoken kind of person. And... I, I try not to let my feelings be known on the matter. But if you didn't take communion like that, you had to put your hands behind your back. And one of these teachers would then put their hand on your head and they would bless you. I don't get blessed by one of my teachers. I was like, this is a ridiculous idea. And you know, so the, the teacher who was also an Anglican minister, his name was the Reverend Evans. He was a very short man. So behind his back, we called him Diddy Evans. And Diddy Evans would come along. It's another Diddy Evans thing. Great to see you, Luke. And um, he would come along and uh, he would put his hand on your head and he would bless you. And when you're kind of younger in the school, you don't think about it too much. But when you get into the later parts of the school, you think, how many more people's heads has that hand been on? before it reached my head that, that, that wasn't great and he would mutter some words in which I would hear the word bless but it, it, it didn't mean anything bless bless it didn't, it didn't mean anything when someone sneezes we say bless you the reason we say it is this. In the year 590, Pope Gregory, when the plague was running rampant through Rome commanded that whenever somebody sneezed you had to say bless you to them in order to stop the plague spreading any further. And so that was the idea behind it. So many of you, terrified of the plague, whenever anybody sneezes near you, still got bless you, bless you. And we just kind of, we go through raw on doing it. Oh, we use it like this. We say something like this, don't we? Oh, bless. You know, if something's really cute, oh, bless. Or if something's really bad, oh, bless. And, 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 the, and the, the term, I mean, what, what, what does that even mean? What does it mean? Oh, bless, don't get the plague as well. I don't quite know what it even means at that point. But we kind of use the word in this term. And then we, we sometimes, you might pray at a meal and, you know, would say, maybe say to someone on the table, hey, will you bless the food? Why? What, what blessing does this food need? It hasn't got long left on this planet. I'm going to bless this food. Father, I bless that roast beef. It's mine. You just, just, it's, it's, it's like, bless the food. Bless the food. My parents, when we used to go on holiday, and uh, we get in the car, and my mum would say, right, we're going to pray for the journey before we go. Father, we bless the journey. We bless the journey. We all know what's going to happen. It's the mid-1970s. It's 300 miles to my grandparents' house. We're driving a car called a Woolsey Hornet. A Woolsey Hornet is basically a mini with a boot. Me and my brother are strapped into the back of the car. I say strapped, but there were no seatbelts in those days. It don't matter how hard you pray bless, I'm dead if we crash. 
and we bless the journey. It's like some, some weird, weird thing. We're talking about blessed, and yet the context of the word in our culture today doesn't really, it doesn't amount to much. It's a bit perfunctory. It's kind of something you say over food or something you say over a journey or something you say over someone who sneezes when what you're really saying is stay away from me because I don't want what you've got. Bless. It kind of, mm, it doesn't have any weight to it. But we're going to read what the Bible says. And we're going to look at the nature of being blessed and what that actually means. And you're going to understand this tonight. This is powerful. This is not lightweight. This is not a little bit of feeling a little bit better. It's not a cute little thing you say. This is powerful. Pope Gregory probably had it right. The power of these words is such that it could rebuke a plague, turn around a nation, and transform someone's life. But we've got to go, right, I'm going to take a hold of it, I'm going to believe it, and I'm going to be a person who walks in blessing. So grab your Bible, why don't you? Turn to Genesis chapter 12, hopefully you're already there, and we're going to read the first three verses. The Lord had said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I'll make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I'll make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Now, that feels a bit more weighty. That feels a bit better than, oh, blessing. You know, you see a picture of your small child. Oh, bless. See a picture of me when I was little. Oh, bless him. What happened there? It's, it's, it's this, though. This has got life-changing capacity attached to it. This has got transformation power indelibly written into the words. These are not words of, mm, these are not words of, that would be nice if. These are words of change. These are words that you can feel God invoking them upon Abraham's life. This word, bless, it means three very distinct things. Number one, it means praise. It means have a praise. Number two, it means to have a supernatural favor. Supernatural favor. And it, number three, it means to be a gift. To be a gift. So when God's talking to Abraham, he says, Abraham, I'm going to make you a praise. I mean, I'm going to so get a hold of you that just who you are is like a praise to me. Who you are is a praise to me. Not what you do is a praise to me. Not the words you speak or the attitude of your heart or the dance that you do or the song that you sing. All those things are acts of praise. But when you really understand being blessed, you are a praise to God. Abraham's kind of going, I'm, I'm a praise. All by myself. I'm just a praise that impacts and changes and turns things. He, when God spoke over him. He said, I, you're a praise to me. Just when you open your eyes in the morning, you're a praise to me. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to act anywhere. You're a praise. Just by breathing, you're a praise. Even when you hold your breath, you're still a praise. It doesn't matter what you're doing or how it is. You're a praise. And then he says, blessed also means it's supernatural acts of favor. Not just a little bit of favor. Sometimes we underplay the word favor. Man, I got paid this month. That's favor. No, it's not. You worked. Now, if you get paid and you didn't work, that's favor. But sometimes we downplay what, what favor is. God wants supernatural favor. When he talks about invoking a blessing on your life, you don't lean over your table and pray over your food and go, God, this food needs supernatural favor. Well, actually, there's been a few meals I have had that needed supernatural favor. I mean, they needed something, they needed, because their natural thing was not good. Their natural taste was, they needed some kind of supernatural taste to make it palatable. Then it needed supernatural for it to stay inside of me because it was trying to get out faster than I was putting it in. You need a supernatural favor for that kind of moment. But most of the time, supernatural favor is not talking about your food or your journey. It's actually talking about God's power being at work in your life. That when God talks about you being blessed, he's not talking about feel-good factor. Sometimes we say, God, I really need you to bless me today. Like it's a power-up 
in a, ge- in a computer game. Like today specifically, I need your power. If you can get me through today, I'll be okay by myself. Would you just bless me? I've got a really difficult day at work, God. I need your blessing today. So bless me today. I've got a really big conversation in my family, God. Would you give me your blessing today? Just, just in, in, if you could do this one thing for me, God, would you give me your blessing today? And it's like we hit the power-up button, and for a day, we can believe we can walk in God's blessing, that we can act in it, that he's going to help us in this one thing that we specifically asked him to do. I want to say to you today, God's not in, interested in just blessing you. He's not interested in just blessing you. He doesn't want you just to be blessed. He wants you to be blessed. He doesn't want you to have a, a blessing where you go, oh, that was really good. Man, I felt really good. That, that, you know, that blessing got me through the day. I went to church on Sunday. I felt a blessing. I think I can make it to Wednesday. Maybe. If there's a following wind and I'm going downhill, I could make it all the way to Thursday. And we treat this thing that is praise, that is supernatural favor, and that is the gift as if it's a power-up in a computer game. Just get me through this. Just get me through this next bit. If I can get through the boss section, then I can make it on my own after that. But God doesn't want to act like that. He doesn't want to be like that. He doesn't want you to have a blessing. He wants you to be blessed. As God looked at Abraham, he looked at his life and he said, Abraham, I, I, I don't want to give you a blessing. I, I'm, I don't just want you to have a little bit of something, Abraham. I know you need a child and that would be a blessing. But I want you just to have this blessing. I actually want you to be blessed. I want every part of your life to be blessed. I want there to be an overflow of blessing right the way through your life, touching everything that you are and everything that you're about. I don't just want you to have a blessing. I want you to be blessed. In fact, Abraham, the word blessed means gift. You're the gift. Abraham, you, I'm, I'm blessing you in such a way that you're like a gift now. You, you're a gift to your world. You're a gift to the people in your world. Anyone you encounter and anyone you meet, just by meeting you, the gift of who you are causes an overflow to come with it. Abraham, I don't want you to have some kind of blessing that's just good for you. I want you to be so blessed that it transforms everything and everyone around you so nothing is the same again. When we talk about the nature of blessing, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about something being good for a few seconds or a couple of days or maybe a month if it was really good. God wants you so blessed. He wants you so blessed that the blessing that is upon you has the power to transform anything that is around you. Abraham didn't want a blessing. And God didn't speak it over him. Let's read it again. We're going to read this passage a few times. Let's read what it says in verse 2. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. You will be. I will make your name great and you'll be a blessing. I bless those who bless you. If I curse you, I'll curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. He didn't receive a blessing. He became a blessed person. The thing for Abraham was this. He realized really, really early in the journey, he realized this, that blessing, being blessed, is actually a question of identity, not circumstance. When circumstances are good, we often say to one another, oh, yeah, I'm really blessed. God's really blessing me. Now, it's this, this good thing has happened. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling blessing. I'm feeling blessing all around me. Feeling, it's, it's great. Everything I touch is good. I'm, I'm walking in blessing. But the moment everything you touch isn't good, we don't use the word blessing at that point. We use other words. Start saying, maybe a little bit, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not in line with God's will. Because things aren't perfect. So maybe I'm out of line. Maybe there's some, maybe there's some hidden sin in my life. I'm going to have to dig it up. My experience is this. I'm pretty clear on what I'm doing wrong most of the time. And if I can't find it, 
My wife is pretty clear on what I'm doing wrong most of the time. You're laughing too hard. We, we don't realize what Abraham realized. That for God to say, I'm going to bless you, you have to do what Abraham did. First one reads like this. The Lord had said to Abraham, had said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. Blessed is not circumstantial, it is identity. Blessed is the identity of who I am. Abraham, leave behind your country, your people, and your father's household. The three things that have shaped you, the three things that have prepared you, the three things that have set you up for life, the three things that have determined your mindset, the three things that have decided your language, the three things that have determined your actions, leave those things behind. Because those three things are now in the way of you being a blessed person. They were the things that shaped your destiny. But if you're going to be a person who is blessed, they have to stop being the things that shaped your destiny. Just because you were born there. Just because you grew up with that accent on that street. Just because you came from that social economic group. Just because your family lived a certain way and acted a certain way. That doesn't mean you have to. That doesn't mean you have to live like that or act like that. Instead, you can choose this instead. God, I want you to bless me. I want you to get so a hold of my life that I don't live like the pastors dictated that I should, but instead I live with a blessing on my life that shapes my future and my children's children's future. Abraham got it. He got it. He realized that his past is not his identity. His identity could only be found through being a blessed person. It's not the only person in Scripture this happened to. In the book of Ruth, we meet two women. And Naomi, who is the older of the two women. Naomi uh, married to Elimelech with two sons, Marlon and Kilion. And Marlon and Kilion, Elimelech and Naomi, they, they move from their land to another land because they're afraid of famine. The two young men, they meet girls and get married. Two girls, Ruth and Opa. Uh, eventually, everything goes really pear-shaped. The dad dies. The two boys die. Naomi's left with two daughters-in-law. And she turns to these girls and says, listen, go back to your country. Go back to your people. Go back to your father's household. And one of them says, yep, because that's my identity. That's who I am. That's where I'm from, and that's how I want to live my life. I'm going back. And the young woman, Orpah, disappears from the pages of history, disappears from the Bible. But Ruth looks at Naomi and says, Naomi, I realize the circumstances of your life don't look like blessing. You fled your home. You fled a famine. Your, your husband has died. Your children have died. I realize that doesn't look like a blessing. But I believe this, that who you are is a blessed person. So I want to say this to you, Naomi. I want to say, your God, he's going to be my God. And your people, they're going to be my people. And where you go, then I am going to go. And so help me, God, if I don't do it. And she realized what Abraham had caught in a second. I got to leave my country. I gotta leave my people, I gotta leave my father's household, because if I'm gonna be a person who is blessed, I have gotta empty myself of the things that get in the way. You ever been shopping and you think to yourself, I've just got a few things to get, I don't even need to bother with a basket. <laughs> just a few. a few. And you set off round the aisles and you start to pick up the, the one or two things that you need to get. And then if you're anything like me, your phone the text lands in your phone with a list. Oh, oh list, yeah, oh, okay, oh, just get, can you just get a couple of other things? Yeah, yeah, And then one of my children discovers I'm at the shop and another text lands with another list. 
And before you know it, you're marching around the aisles with your, your hands kind of like, you know, your fingers are, you know, you've got 18 pints of milk on, five fingers, and you're kind of like, you know, this could break any minute. And you know, you, you've got boxes under this arm and you've piled stuff on top and you're trying to keep one hand free just in case so you can catch anything. And then you see a couple of things you really need. Need a basket. Never a basket anywhere useful, is there? They're by the door. Like anyone walks through the door and thinks, I need a basket. And I'm like, oh, I need a basket. This is not what, oh, this is what I really need, though. Blessed is realizing that I have to create the capacity in my life to receive everything that God has for me. I have to create the space in my life to receive all God wants to do through and in my life. Here's the problem. Our lives are sometimes so full of ourselves that God can't bless our lives. He can give you a blessing because what happens then is he puts his blessing onto what you're doing. But that's not what God wants for you. That's the elastoplast of God. It'll see you through, but it won't transform you. What he actually wants to do is make you a blessed person so that everything is transformed around you. To really get it, we have to understand this. The journey to being blessed begins with the surrender of all you are to receive all you can be. The journey to being blessed begins with the surrender of all you are to receive all you can be. You cannot be blessed if your life is already full. Man, we fill our lives with some stuff. Our problems, other people's problems. It's nice to fill your life with other people's problems because you don't have to handle them in the same way. We fill our lives with busyness. We fill our lives with challenge. And God's going, empty it. Empty your life. Leave your country, your people, and your father's household and I will bless you. Abraham, he didn't want the blessing. He wanted to be blessed. God looks at you and I, and he says, I want to make you a praise to my name. Your life, I want to make it a praise to my name. I want people to look at your life, to look at how you live and how you act and what you do, and I want people to go, man, that's got to be God. I want to make your life a praise to my name. God wants to make supernatural favor all over your life. His supernatural favor everywhere in every part of your life. I mean the Gospels and my personal devotions and I mean the Gospel of Matthew just the last couple of weeks. And as I'm reading through these chapters, I'm seeing time after time, the supernatural just flows and happens. It's just normal. It's just what, what occurs when you walk with Jesus. It's what it is. And blessed doesn't mean things go right. It means the supernatural occurs around you. Favor happens way outside of what you're used to. Because God's moving and God's working. It means you're a gift. It means you're a gift. Let me talk to you about the anatomy of blessing. First of all, you've got to grab this. You've got to grab this for yourself. No one else can get this for you. You can only get this for yourself. I am blessed. I am blessed. I'm, I, I'm not, I've not received the blessing. I'm blessed. At a fundamental level, if you're walking with God, at a fundamental level, you're blessed. At the, beyond the DNA, deeper than the DNA of who you are, you are blessed. It's not about what's going on in your circumstance. Circumstance is no indicator of blessing. If circumstance was an indicator of blessing, Jesus was not very blessed at the cross. If circumstance is an indicator of blessing, the Apostle Paul, who got beaten up in more places than there were places, he was not a blessed man. If circumstance is an indicator of blessing, the disciples who followed Jesus were not blessed. Because all bar one died horrendous deaths. Circumstance 
is no indicator of being blessed. Do you know what also is not an indicator of being blessed? Your feelings. My feelings are no indicator of me being blessed. Being blessed is God's statement. I will bless you. My statement could well be, I don't feel blessed. Well, my statement has nothing to do with the fact. I'm describing how I feel about the fact. The fact is still true. I am blessed. The fact is still true when I feel terrible. The fact is true when I feel lame. The fact is true when I feel broken and useless. I am blessed. And there are days when you have to drag yourself out of bed and remind yourself, I'm blessed. I don't feel it. Circumstance doesn't look like it. But I'm declaring what the Bible says. And the Bible says, I am blessed. The Bible says, that, that's, that's not what's happening to me. That's who I am. That's not what's going on around me. That's what's, that's what's going on inside me. I am blessed. Abraham has this moment. God says, I'll bless you. And then he says this, I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. Not only am I blessed, I'm a blessing. I am a blessing. I said earlier that the word blessed means gift. Man, you look at your world. You're a gift to your world. Man, it's time to stop making excuses for ourselves, playing ourselves down, saying we can't or we shouldn't, and starting to recognize, no, 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 because I am blessed, I am a blessing. Because I am blessed, I'm a gift to my world. I'm a gift to anyone that I encounter, anyone that I bump into. I am blessed, so they are going to receive blessing just because I'm there. Just because you're in your business, it's going to get blessed. Just because you're living on your street, it's going to get blessed. Because we planted this church here in this city, the city is going to be blessed. Because we're going to be a blessing, because we are blessed people. But we've got to understand, you've got to understand, I am blessed. I can't tell you you're blessed. I cannot tell you you're blessed. You've got to catch it. I can describe it, and I'm really giving it my best shot. But you've got to hold it. You've got to catch it. You've got to believe it. You've got to examine your life and go, do you know what? It don't look like it. It don't feel like it, but I'm going to whisper it to myself. I'm blessed. I didn't feel any different. I'm 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 blessed. Oh, nothing seems to be changing yet, but let me just make the declaration just another time. Let me just find a, just a little bit more faith, a little bit more power. I I'm I'm blessed. Nothing shifted yet, but I'm still going to declare it because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word. So I'm going to speak the word so that I can hear the word so I can generate faith in my life. So I'm going to say it again. I am blessed. I am blessed. It doesn't matter what's happening and what's going on and how I feel about it. I'm declaring I am blessed. I don't know if I'm preaching to you, but I'm preaching to me. I am blessed right now. I am blessed in every way. I am blessed in the power of Christ. I'm blessed in the power of the Holy Spirit. I am blessed. But more than that, I'm a blessing. Oh, I'm a blessing. If I encounter you, I'm going to bless you in some way. Because overflow out of my life is blessing. Grab your seats for a minute. It's blessed if I'm blessed, but there's an overflow that I'm a blessing. But this is the incredible thing as well. Blessing is contagious. It's contagious. God says to Abraham, he says, I'll bless those who bless you. Just because someone blesses Abraham, they get blessed by God. So the moment I start to bless you, God starts to bless you. The moment you start to bless me, God God starts to bless me. And we can start an epidemic of blessing that starts to flow and move and walk and transform and change and break into people's lives. Because suddenly, blessing becomes contagious. That's why when you meet someone who's had a breakthrough, there's something contagious about being around them. Because the blessing of what God's done in their life just makes you go, I want something like that. When someone's had a financial breakthrough, you know what, sometimes in, in our finance meetings, Dave will bring the finance report and say, hey, someone's given like this, and, and we'll know a story behind it. And they got a blessed, they got blessed. 
And in being blessed, other people go, I can give like that. I can believe for that. And the blessing becomes contagious in their lives. Someone gets healed. It produces faith for healing in other people's lives. And the blessing becomes contagious as it starts to flow and move in people's lives. But here's the really crazy part of the anatomy of blessing. My blessing has the power to change the world. Your blessing, the blessing of who you are, the praise that you are to God, the supernatural favor that is in you, the gift that God has made you by blessing you has the power to change the world. Then sometimes we don't play that and we say, to change your world. Or to change the world around you. But when God spoke to Abraham, God says this, I'll bless those who bless you, ever curse you, I'll curse you. All people on earth will be blessed through you. That's not like anyone in your immediate vicinity. Anyone you meet, anyone you chat to in a positive conversation, all people, all people, irrespective of meeting you, irrespective of having anything to do with you, irrespective of even if they know your name, the power of what we contain when we understand that I am blessed I haven't received the blessing, but I am blessed. When we understand that, the power of that has the power to transform the world. If you move on from Genesis chapter 12, you move to Genesis chapter 25. Abraham's on his final legs. He has a son called Isaac, and late in his life, Abraham's gone. Well, he's made a few choices that I would say were slightly questionable in the least. He's married a few other women, and not only that, he's taken some concubines. And this is on his last days of life. It says that he gathers the sons of his concubines to him and he gives them all a gift. Here's one gift for you. Here's a gift for you. Here's a gift for you. Here's a gift for you. Everything else, Isaac's. Everything else, Isaac's. When my grandfather passed away, uh, we as the cousins, we all went to his house. And uh, my mum and her brother, my uncle said, hey, take one thing to remember your granddad by. Oh, great. So we kind of all wandered around the house and we all picked a something to remember our granddad by and we kind of took it out. Then this is what my my mom and her brother did. They emptied the rest of the house. They sold the house and they kept everything. You are not, you are not the son of a concubine. You're not a second hand part of the faith. You're not separated out and pushed aside. You've not just been allowed in. The Bible tells us that for those of us who've made the decision to follow Jesus, that we are sons and daughters. We're not grandsons or granddaughters. We're not cousins or second cousins twice removed. We're sons and daughters. That means that everything is open to us and everything is ours. God doesn't give you a gift. He gives you everything that he has and he opens it up for you. Everything you need, the Bible tells us, for life and godliness is already yours. I'm blessed. I am am blessed and this is this and then Abraham died and God blessed Isaac you see blessing flows it flows from generation to generation the same blessing that meant that all people on earth will be blessed through them flow from Abraham to Isaac from Isaac to Jacob. From Jacob, it flowed into the tribes of Israel. And then we hit that point where right the way through the Old Testament, God has been bringing us to a moment where he reveals Jesus. In the book of Galatians, it tells us this, that we are heirs of the promise. That actually, we're sons and daughters of Abraham because we have faith like Abraham. So that blessing, that's mine. That is my blessing. That is your blessing. God's God's not declaring a new blessing over you. 
He's given you an inheritance that has been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And the inheritance says this, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing and I'll bless those who bless you and heaven curses you, I'll curse and all people on earth will be blessed through you. God is calling us to get a hold of the simple truth. I am blessed. I haven't received a blessing from him. I'm blessed. It's my nature. It's who I am. It's how I'm wired. It's what goes on inside of me. It's what transforms and works inside of me. It's who I am. Book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul describes it like this. We have every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Every spiritual blessing. It means this. It means we have an acceptance that can never be questioned. It means we have an inheritance that can never be lost. It means we have a deliverance that can never be excelled. It means we have a grace that can never be limited. It means we have a hope that can never be disappointed. It means we have a joy that can never be diminished. It means we have an intimacy with God that can never be reversed. It means we have a peace that can never be disturbed, a righteousness that can never be tarnished, and a salvation that can never be cancelled. I, I don't know about you, but I am blessed. I don't know about your feeling or your heart or your faith, but I want to make a declaration over my life. I am blessed. Come on, church, make some kind of declaration. Who are you? I am blessed. Who are you? I am blessed. I've been set up to be blessed. I've been set up to walk in blessing. I've been set up to blessing to overflow in my life and through my life and to other people's lives. I don't care what you feel like. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what you've gone through. I don't care what the challenge is. It's time to declare, I am blessed. Come on church, I am blessed. I am blessed. Come on. Come on, declare it.